This is Little Jimmy. Little Jimmy wanted nothing more in life than a newly improved Game Gear. He dreamt of a Game Boy Color sized Game Gear with a rechargeable battery, a nice big clear screen with all his favourite games loaded onto it. Sega hates Little Jimmy. Hello everyone, how's it going? Little Jimmy here and welcome back to the Retro Future. Today we're going to be taking a look at Sega's brand new Game Gear. This is it in here. Why is it this big? This is a joke. Surely this is a joke. Is this a joke? This has got to be a joke. Is this just the game? No, no it doesn't look like it. No, this is actually happening. It's tiny. It's called the Game Gear Micro. Who remembers when the Game Boy Micro came out and how successful that was? Whose idea was this? Is this an ad for Specsavers? Because I've been to Specsavers and it still isn't going to help, but it is Sega, so it must be good. We are going to be taking a look at the Game Gear Micro. I've got two of them. I've got a black one and I've got a yellow one, and I wanted the yellow one because I like the colour yellow. It's got a cooking game on it. Yep, that's right, it's limited to four games and uh, you have to buy another one if you want to play a different game. They are full of good ideas. The only thing they need to do now is release a magnifying glass. Oh dear, the big bloody window. Big window? This thing is honestly the size of a Kinder Egg. It's absolutely tiny and it sounds like the contents of a Kinder Egg too. This whole thing cost me £85 and I haven't even bought this one. My friend's lending it to me. I've bought both of these for £85. The reason being is it's only released in Japan. Another fantastic idea. What, what is happening? Let's not even make it rechargeable. That's not a joke. It hasn't even got a rechargeable battery in it. It requires two AAA batteries. Speaking of which, I haven't got them. I'm back with the batteries. How long will the batteries last, you might ask? Forever, because I'll never play this. Okay, that's enough waffle. Let's have a look at the Game Gear Micros. So they are presented in quite a nice box. However, the box is very thin cardboard. It is printed quite well, but it just looks like a toy. This doesn't look like the kind of thing that screams $50, which was the retail price in Japan. It just kind of screams £25 kind of thing. I, I don't know. It's, it's really difficult to put a price on this kind of thing because it is really marketed towards collectors. People in Japan love Sega. It's a, it's a close thing to their hearts and they will buy this all up, uh, which is a good thing because there's quite a lot of them. There's the whole range of Game Gears and then you could also buy an additional sort of like wall mounted thing that has a couple more Game Gears in there and a little thing in the center. Again, that was very expensive. I think for me to buy that in the UK, it was £300. Although they did have the uh, mini clear black one, which I really, really want to go with my actual full-size clear black one. Let's get inside the boxes. I can't read anything on the box because it's all in Japanese. I'll put a picture up on the screen of all the games that come with the different colours. Uh, there is a really good selection of games, in fairness. So uh, props to them for that. But it's just a shame that you have to buy each one in order to play the games because... Uh, yeah, I mean, these are so damn expensive. Big thank you to Matthew Whitehead from Jelly Belly Customs for providing me with this for the video. Here we go. Piece of paper. Oh, God, it's even smaller than I thought. I was kind of thinking it'd be about the same size as the Game Boy Micro, but no, it's not even that. Oh, the screen. The screen is so small. <laughs> It's about the same size as the screen in a real size Game Gear. I mean, it is bloody cute. That cannot be denied. But for £50, £85, including the little big window, is that worth it? I don't know. Oh, dear. Look at the size of it. It's so much smaller than the Game Boy Micro. If you've got a Game Boy Micro, go like that with it, and that's the size of it. I can't believe someone thought this was a good idea. It is absolutely adorable. It cannot be denied. It is absolutely adorable. And it feels relatively high quality. I don't know how the buttons are going to feel. The D-pad feels pretty awful, actually. It doesn't really feel like anything's actually happening. The one and two buttons aren't that bad, in fairness. Uh, yeah, it is a really nice looking device. There's a sort of a fake cartridge in there on the back and then uh, the battery cover for the two AAAs, for goodness sake. 
There's nothing on the bottom, but on this corner, there's a hole for a lanyard, just to make this thing even more of a joke. On the top, you've got the power switch, a micro USB rechargeable port. No, it's not. It's a mains port. You can plug it into a wall and play it tethered to your house, like everyone enjoys playing portable games. You've also got a headphone jack, this little thing, and a volume wheel. And then on this side, nothing, and nothing on that side either. So, let's turn it on. Didn't think it was going to work there for a minute. Really? <laughs> Before we take a look around the device, let's open up the yellow one as well. There it is. Oh, the yellow one is cool. It is very, very cool. I'm glad I bought that one. Yes, look at it. That's far better on camera than this thing. It's very difficult to see, but yeah, that is absolutely stunningly gorgeous. Let's have a look at the big window. The big window micro. So it's an oxymoron, <laughs> right? Oh, it, you have to assemble it yourself. It really is a Kinder Egg toy. Okay, how does this work? Okay, so without looking at the instructions, I'm gonna guess that this bit goes on here. Like that. And then, that's going to clip on to there using this thing. Oh. Oh. There is no clipping to be done. It just sits there. That's not real. <laughs> is that happening? Oh. So let's actually have a little bit of a play on them. So let, let's get rid of that because it's really not helping a lot. So we've got Sonic the Hedgehog, we've got Poyo Poyo 2, and then we've got, I think, Outrun. Yep, Outrun and Royal Stone. But it's so difficult to see the screen, you can hardly even see the box art image. And remember, these are my thumbs. Take a look at your thumbs and see if you can imagine just how small this is. So whilst you're in the menu, you can press this button, which will rotate and show the sort of spines of the box, which is relatively cool and then pressing the two button will give you a little bit of i think that's probably information about sonic and then information about poyo poyo 2 how do we get out of that and the same over here and the same over here if you press up you've got a little settings cog up there but let's go over to sonic and actually play some gameplay oh this is so difficult to navigate Well, this isn't actually too bad. I think there is a little bit of sort of lag. It feels like there is, but I think that was also uh, present on the original Game Gear itself. Looking through the viewfinder on my camera for once actually makes this thing slightly easier to see what's going on. Looking at it in person, you really do need it very close up to your eyes. But I have to admit it, this is quite cool, but that's really all it is. It's a cool sort of gimmick. It's not really something that you're going to want to sit down and, and sink a load of time into with a cup of tea at your sofa because it's just sort of a bit too impractical. The screen is very good. It has to be said, the colours and the viewing angle of the screen is very good. The colours are incredibly vibrant and really accurate. And I think one of the things that we forget about the Game Gear is playing on the original Game Gear, everything was so washed out because of the strange backlight. I don't know if you saw all that lag there, but I do believe there was lag on the original Game Gear. Um, but yeah, the colours are so washed out by the Game Gear's original backlight that when you actually play a Game Gear game on either an emulator or something like this, it's amazing to see all the colors that you never even knew were there so uh yeah it does have to be said this is quite a pleasant experience even though it's too small to really fully enjoy it the, the big window thing is quite a nice addition but again the whole thing just screams put it on your shelf and never really play it which for the price that this thing is is quite hard to justify so to save a game, you hold the start button and then you press the two uh, and then you can choose which save slot you save it in and then that one will load the save slot, which is quite cool. The other options you have are brightness. You can lower and increase the brightness, which is quite nice. Oh, I've completely missed it. And then the final button you have is to exit the menu or exit to the menu. Right, let's have a little look at Outrun, because I like that game. One thing to mention, it does feel very nice with the batteries in it. It has a very nice sort of weight to it. It's a sort of a solid chunk. It feels very dense with uh, with the tech inside it. Um, but I can't help but feel this thing would just be far better if it was in between the two sizes. It would be so nice to have a Game Boy Color sort of sized 
um, game gear with a rechargeable battery and then not limit it to four games per device. Well, I mean, it works absolutely great. You know, it's just the right size that it works and without being completely gimmicky. Some of you might remember this, the Pocket Sprite. Uh, the only thing that's even more impractical than the Game Gear Micro. Uh, imagine, obviously, the size screen of this compared to that. I love it. I don't hate it. I don't absolutely adore it. I mean, it's definitely not going to be something I will play a lot of. It's going to look nice on a shelf. That's a no-brainer. But that's really all I think they're going to do. It's, it's a difficult thing to really justify spending the price on, especially if you want to collect all of the games. You're going to be like three or four hundred dollars or pounds in, and then what have you got? You've got something that just looks really nice, and it's a nice little talking point. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Uh, I don't want this to be a complete roast. I do like it. I do think it's good. It's high quality enough. It's just depressing that it's not in between sizes. Even the Game Boy Micro, it being this size would have been nice, but it's just even smaller than that. But again, I don't hate it. Don't hate me. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Goodbye.